You're watching TBC Breakfast. Let's get to our next uh, discussion now. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, is receiving heavy backlash following his advice to Northerners. Uh, they should vote for him in the 2023 election because he hails from the Northern region. Atiku, who stated this during an interactive session with the Ariwa Joint Committee in Kaduna the weekend, told his audience not to support a Yoruba or Igbo candidate in reference to the presidential candidates of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Metinubu, and his Labour Party counterpart, Peter Obi. The PDP flag bearer, Fulani from Adamawa State, declared that what the average northerner needs is somebody who is from the north and also understands the part of the country and has been able to build bridges across the country. His comments has attracted widespread condemnation from the APC, the Labour Party, the NNPP, social cultural groups and civil society organizations. That's the crux of our next discussion. Joining us now is the business and economic development strategist and uh, social commentator, Michael Adeleye. It's nice to have you join us right now. Thank you for having me. Right. Now, I, I know you've been following this uh, development, but first of all, uh, at a time like this, let me ask you, uh, what do you make of a statement, uh, the statement credited to the uh, a candidate, a presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, where he's talking about uh, vote for me because I'm from here and not from the other side. Thank you so much. Um, personally, I think at this point in time, I should have expected him to have come out to the public and make um, an apology for that statement. Because um, at this time of the situation in the country, it's a volatile situation. Um, we have division among every ethnic um, group in the, in the country, race and all that, and which has actually divided the country into various parts. So we're looking for someone who's going to come in and bridge the gap and mend those fences. And, and, and in the midst of all this, someone just came out and made such a pronouncement. I think it's an indictment. For me, it's an indictment. And also, we have the Electoral, um, electoral Act, um, Section 97, which stated clearly that if anyone during the election season or period speaks contrary to the laid down procedure and principle of the, um, of the act, will be indicted. If it's a personal statement, it's a one million naira, which is mega. If it's a political party, it's, a, it's 10 million. I think now the INEC should obviously begin to mm. follow that process and make sure that is being followed suit. But generally, I think we don't need such a comment, we don't need such statements, and we don't need um, anyone who's going to govern this great country to mend all the fences, to say or to make such statements. I think um, it's absolutely unacceptable. Was he throwing uh, red meat at the cage? For who to eat or to devour? For the, no, for the, for, for the northern crowd. Is it, is, it, is it a cynical move to say, um, I know that when I say this, there are many people who enjoy it from the sun, from the north, and so damn the south. Well, you're not going to be getting your votes from just from the northern region. We have, as a geopolitical um, society, you need some from the north, you need some from the south, from the east, and from the west. So if you're making such statements, now you're actually prioritizing yourself into that section of the country. Now, for eventual, you become the president. Those people from that area, from the northern region, will begin to tell you, we put you there, so serve our interest. So that's going to bring more division and more catastrophe um, within the society. And I think throwing such a myth like, to the cage, like um, he just said now, I think it's a very, very dangerous move to make. At this point, so. All right. So, some people have started uh, breaking down the analysis, saying that uh, with the current situation where it seemed like uh, there is no hope in the South-South where Governor of River State, Wiki, rules the place and being influential with the votes that will come from the South-South, and then the Southeast where the governors that would have uh, been in support with, because they are PDP are also with Wiki. So if he's seeing that... Uh, there is no hope for me to get votes from the south, south, and southeast, and not even from the southwest. 
And then let me come back to where maybe it's my region, in quote, that's the only hope I have. That one, that, it, that one gets him the tickets. Okay. How is he going to win? You see, when you're dealing with a very sensitive situation like this, mm. you don't bring in an internal factor into the playing mm. field. I think because he has um, rancor within the party and um, he's not being supported, like you did mention, with wicked supporters and all that, he, he, he doesn't need to bring out, you don't need to wash your dirty clothes um, in the public. Face the, um, the, the generality of the society and tell them what you have for them, how to bring the country together and make it a prosperous country. But making such a, a statement, I think, um, like I said earlier, it's, it's an indictment. And um, like people always say, um, we, we have begun to see, um, to, to differentiate the shaft from the wit. What you, every, every single statement that every politician makes now tells everyone what's going to happen when they get in there. So if you can tell us, give us um, the generality of your manifesto. For me, I mean, I look at what people say. There is, for me, that I believe there is party manifestos and there's individual manifesto. Now, what I follow is individual manifesto. So if you're saying this is what you're going to do, this is the people that you need um, to vote for you to get you in there, then that means you don't have any concrete and valuable plan for generality of the whole country. Mm -hmm. So I, I think... For now, at this point in time, he should be coming out to actually make a statement, an apology to the entire country and to the world, because we don't need such statements at this point in time. Oh, well, well, it, is, it is very clear that uh, there has been no leader at that level in Nigeria who has ever made any statement close to that. Yeah. Even those who make uh, assertions about regions, they don't put down other regions. They just assert all. their own regions. Yeah, absolutely. But what he did was to say, those people are bad. We are the only people who are good. Who are good in the country. And yeah. We are the only people who matter. Mm -hmm. This is not only unblushing, this is blatant. It is blatant. It's blatant. And, and, and uh, is he not conflating his own personal ambition to that of the North? Because, you know, this is the sixth time he's running for, for president. Mm -hmm. And he has always insisted that the elections, that the presidential candidates in the elections should come from the north. Even when it did not, when it was zoned to the south, it was always come to the north. Any the time of a passenger insisted it must come to the north, he fought with a passenger in Brazil, made him vice president. When it was uh, Yaradua's uh, sickness, and then Jonathan came there and he said, No, the North must complete his uh, turn. When uh, Jonathan was done and there was APC, he went to fight with, with Buhari. His sister must come to the North. When it was 2019, even the whole party in Portaco decided to come to the North. And now, after eight years of uh, uh, Fulani, how was that Fulani? Um, tenure. Tenure. He's still insisting that he should come to the north. It looks like whether it is the turn of the north or not, or not the turn of the north, it is always the turn of article. <laughs> yeah? that's, what, that's what it seems. Does that not make it an article agenda that is trying to drag its region? Into his own his own version of of of, uh, of fanaticism for the north. Is it is it boils down to the same thing that I said earlier on? I mean, if he's not coming out now to give a public statement, I mean, even after the statement, I don't think it's going to really help him out. The stain has been dropped on the white cloth, and it's going to be very difficult to clean that white stain on the white cloth. And I think. Um, there is something that I'm actually, I've been doing some sort of consultation among some several civil society organizations. I don't know how that could work out. What I'm thinking is, if anybody wants to become a public servant, like the president, the governor, there should be a manifesto, or, you know, like the peace accord that they all sign. That, look, this is my manifesto, I'm going to have to do this one, two, three, A, B, C. My first one year, two years, three years. This is what I, I'm going I'm to have to achieve. Now, there should be something that they should ask them. If you fail 
if you fail to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C, the public should come out en masse. You could be unseated. But nobody is talking about that now because we, we, we hear all sort of um, promises. In the last election, the one before then, are we going to do this? We're going to employment, which is very critical. Youth employment, training, skill acquisition, mm -hmm. um, about the, um, what's it called? The oil subsidy and all that. The exchange rate, we, we had a lot of promises. And in the end, nothing happened. And no one is actually talking about that. But now as we speak today, you have a lot of all these presidential aspirants saying they want to do this, they want to do that. But no one is asking them a question or holding them to account. What about if your first time in the office, if you fail to do this, give a specific period or season. My first one year, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. My second year, A, B, C. Now, if I fail to do so, then the public can come out en masse to actually demonstrate that you have failed us. And they could insist you. Now, if, if, if that has been put into place and signed by all the aspirants um, contesting this election, the moment you get into office, you know that, yes, you have to roll up your sleeves and mm. begin to work. Serious business. Serious business. Mm. But if we just believe, we've been believing for ages, they're going to do this, they promise us, and they never do anything. So it is when it gets to worse situation that we begin to cry out. But why don't we hold them to account from the first year? Mm. Why you give us um, a, a narrative um, 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 what's it called? responsibility and, uh, and what you're going to achieve in your first year, your second year, your third year, so everybody can follow suit. So if you fail to do so, Sign that documentation that if I fail to do so in such a period of time, stipulated, then you could all come out en masse to demonstrate and um, you could be unseated. That is what I think we should be doing at this point in time. Because we're, we're, we're tired of promises. We're tired of all agendas, manifesto that doesn't work. Now, to pass in sort of an injury, this is what we are saying again now. I mean, like somebody is saying to us, don't, we don't need an evil person. We don't need a Yoruba person, we need a Hausa person, I'm, pan, I'm pan-Nigerian, from the northern origin. So are you really saying to all the entirety of the country, the only people that could actually bridge, make this country prosperous and make it move forward is only from the northern region? Come on, we, 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 that is an indictment. And, uh, he said, uh, right. and he said he has, built, he has been building bridges in the, in the south. So is he building bridges in the south for the north? You can't, you, you, can't, you can't build bridges in the south, and now at this point in time that you need them, negate them. Mm. So it's either you're contradicting your statement that you've been bridging, um, building, building bridges. bridges in the south, in the east, and all that. Now, if you build all those, all those bridges, for what purpose? We, we, if you're not saying now that we don't need them. So what's the purpose? Yeah, it's, bridging, it's building the bridges for the north. Mm. So it's, so it's uh, like I'm uniting you people so that you wasteful, can work for me. Wasteful investment. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what, that's what he's saying. He's saying that I'm, I'm uniting you people. I'm saying, okay, uh, Mr. Lagbaja and Mr. Bowaja, uh, both of you come together because I need you to work for me. For me. That's what all uh, the people have done it before. Uh, Charles de Gaulle. And the biggest... Charles de Gaulle during the uh, Second um, World War. Uh, he had, uh, they had colonialists, French, we in French colonial Africa. He brought them together in order mm -hmm. to fight for France. To fight, yeah, absolutely. Also, so they were slaves. He wanted to make them slaves or for your slaves because mm -hmm. the Germans had already conquered them. But they're so still slaves today. All yes. the Frank, all the um, French-speaking African countries are still slavery to, I mean, to France. No, France. So France. That's what he says. So he's saying now that okay, I want to be nice to you people so that I can use you. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's very cynical. Mm -hmm. It's very cynical. Yes. And there's also the other part of it here is that. In his own party, he's been accused of creating a northern hegemony. So you cannot unite your party. You are creating your under that charge, and then you go back and say that even for the larger country. That is, that, that is unacceptable. Mm. If it doesn't, I, I, I expect him to have been on the public um, media now saying, I apologize, I'm taking by that statement. Even if he apologized, I mean, it's sunk into everybody's mind. The, the, the intention has been made public. But he should come out as a senior citizen of the country and right. I made a wrong statement. What does it mean that he has not apologized? How has it? What does it mean that he has not apologized? Mm. He hasn't? Yes, why? What does that mean? The fact that he has not apologized. What does that mean? What does that what, say? What, what about signal him? does that send? His personal ambition. <laughs> it, it, it means that 
It means that he still believes it. Is, uh, that it's not a slip. Do you remember? Do you remember? You see, we need to be very careful. I mean, the state of this nation, where it is now, we need to be very careful. If you're running for any public office, do you remember the crisis that happened in the north when a lady, a student, was killed? Yes. And burned to death. In Sokoto yes. State. A statement, the whole country says, let's all condemn this barbaric act. And a lot of people, organizations, and international society, community condemned that act. For a minute, it was on his um, Twitter handle that he condemned that um, barbaric act. So w w when the pressure came from the North, that if he wants their votes, I'm not sure if you remember that, that if he wants, if the North, they told him that if he wants their votes, he needs to take to off that drugs. statement. And he did. And he withdrew that statement. So again, that's an indictment. So that means you actually believe in, the, in barbarism, you believe in conflict, you believe in religious fanatism and all that kind of thing. It's absolutely unacceptable. Mm. Well, uh, looking at it even deeper, uh, the statement he has made, whether he's going to apologize later on or whether he's going to say that he was quoted out of context, like uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of times people we heard say him. this. I watched it as well. I, yes. I, I heard him. Yeah. I but, it, but, yes. but, go, go, but going beyond that, uh, he has made the statement. Coming to the hearer or the one who listened, do you think they are buying that idea? Do, what, you think, do, you, do you think those who listen to him mm. are going to buy it from him to say, okay, you have, our leader has said this, so we are going to go that way? Do you think so? You, you, you see, in every society, you have um, fanatics. Mm. The fanatics, we believe in. But unfortunately, the North, um, Northern region is actually trying to capture um, a chunk of that society will look at them and shake their head because they have affiliation with the rest of the country. They have their businesses and their investments and their, um, what's it called? Um, alliance. Alliance with the rest of the country. So they're going to be thinking, hang on, look at, for example, um, I'll mention the name now, um, Dan Gutti. Majority of his investments are livelihood. It's in the South. So he's going to ask himself the question. I, I'm from the North as well. So if this guy is saying just only the North, the Northerners, should, we shouldn't go for Igbo, Yoruba, or any other ethnic except people from the, uh, him that he came from the North. If there's backlash, all his investment is going, 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 going to be gone. And similarly, a lot of other people like that. And people want peace. People are tired of all this religious fanatism, banditry, kidnapping, Boko Haram. People are tired. They want somebody who will make a statement and say, look, let's begin to look into solution, find solution to all these things. Let's kill ethnicism, uh, ethnicity um, crisis. Let's kill all this division. Let's begin to breathe. We don't want to know where you come from. For example, I've been asked, um, I've been opportunity to travel almost everywhere in the world. And as a black man, I, don't, I have never suffered racism. And the reason is this, I believe in myself that I won't consider myself British, where I was born. I won't consider myself a Nigerian. I won't consider myself an African. I look at myself as a citizen of the world. So if I'm coming to your house, the first thing that I do is I, I read about you. I, I, talk, I, I want to find out how do you run your home? How do you speak? What do you eat? What, do you, what are your do and your don'ts? So by the time I meet you for the first time, you begin to find out I fall into place. So there's no, you have no reason to actually look at me in a different way as a, as a different person from a different region, different race, different color. No. So we should begin to look at ourselves in this country like we are all Nigerians, regardless of where you come from. Either Igbo, Yoruba, Tim, Eti, African, whatsoever. It's good you have this uh, uh, approach to how to, how to view uh, your, your person and personality, but that doesn't mean that uh, racism doesn't still exist. It does exist. There are still so many but, people but who are But the point is this, if you ask anyone, let's now begin, okay, in one second. When you talk about what is racism, mm. one race doesn't like another race. You go to England, go to the US, I'm on the Caucasian, and ask them, do you like black? The ones that said, I don't like a black person, ask them, what are your reasons why you don't like black? They have no reason. It is just they were born into it. 
You are fed by their parents. But, by that, is, but that is the situation in Nigeria where mm. people... That's what I'm saying. People are born to particular tribes or environment, and they say, well, the people from, from childhood, the parents will tell them, look, oh, that, that Yoruba man, this is how they behave. But don't talk to them. We don't... Uh, if they don't associate food, with them. Don't associate with the mm -hmm. other Igbo man. Don't mind them. Oh. They are Jukus people. Oh. They are bad people. Oh. Don't talk to them. Oh, those are also people. Ah, that's how they behave. Oh. Don't uh, come near them. Oh. Uh, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then you go up without meeting anybody. Yeah, exactly. You've already formed an opinion. An opinion, you absolutely. Have, you, have, you, have, you have already hated other people. Mm -hmm. You know, this... Uh, Even this without Jean knowing Bossard, them. Jean-Paul Sartre, Jean-Paul Sartre said, uh, um, uh, he said, he said, trouble is other people. <laughs> eh? that's, that's, that's what John Popra said, John, John Possard said. And that, in our case, it's, it's a way of distorting. We, we have a It's false, a mindset. Yeah, it's a false, a false sense of what the order of the world is. Mm -hmm. We just, our senses absorb the wrong structure of the world, and then it becomes right in our own sense. That's what uh, Francis Bacon uh, called the, the idol of the tribe. Mm -hmm. And they talk about the, the idol of the market, they should get the wrong opinion. Opinion, yeah. And they receive them and they become the correct mm -hmm, opinion. Mm -hmm. and things it like becomes that. a norm. Yeah, it becomes a norm. So, so that is what Atiku is trying to exploit. And the question is this, the question is the North itself should understand that it's even in the interest of the North that it doesn't appear. To want to load itself on the rest of the country because even in, in doing that, it divides the country it does. and it gives it no room to even show power. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, about two or three, four decades ago, if you're from the Yoruba tribe, you dare not date someone from an Igbo tribe or, and vice versa, right? But today, the intermarriages that happens between Yoruba and Yoruba Igbo, and Igbo and, mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. is phenomenal, unbelievable. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's It's even underlies. Mm -hmm. It's a. Uh, it's very interesting that very interesting. This thing is happening even where there is an undercurrent of conflict on the political on the level. political yeah. level today. To it's, it's happening when there is an undercurrent of political level. Whereas on the family level, you see so many people. Who are dating across? The across, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is uh, not north with the south, no, east with, with the, the south, west, east west with the west. north. Do you know what that? Do you know what? Do you know what that tells you? Yeah. Do you know what that tells you? Our parents, our grandparents, destroyed that fabric, but the younger generation coming up now don't think that is that makes sense. But you don't see that in the, in social media. You usually see a lot of a lot of a lot of it. You see the the battle between. The, the, the Yoruba youth and the Igbo youth. You see it going on. Mm. And it's the interesting thing that can happen. But it doesn't happen, happen in the physical. Yeah, yeah the, the interesting thing that, that can happen, the interesting thing that can happen is that you can see a Yoruba man who is married to an Igbo woman who is still acting bigoted. But mm. the, the Yoruba is okay. Maybe uh, the Yoruba man will say, well, take this uh, Igbo woman away. We are like, the rest of them are bad. <laughs> because that's how it is in the U.S. Racism. So, oh, the white man is okay. I want to pick this one. I, I like this black man. I like this black woman. And these two are okay. The rest are bad. <laughs> that's a way of... So it's, it's a very terrible way. It's a very terrible psychology that happens. That you, you find out that even in the U.S., one of the greatest races in U.S. history, what is them now? Well, it's one, sectional. One, 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 um, one, um, uh, what do you call it? Oh, uh, I've forgotten his name now. The, the congressman is dead. And his name just. He had a black woman who had a child for him, but we would not let anybody know. But everybody knew. And he took care of that black woman and took care of that child. child. But that, but not in the public. In the public space. Yeah. But because his political life was more important than that. That is the kind of that is the kind of psychology that goes but, into mm, bigotry. Yeah, that yes. is why a man like a book, I think a book can say, "I'm married to a Nipo woman. I have a Yoruba woman." Yes, you like them in your bedroom, in but your bedroom. you don't love you don't love his people. You love her. Mm. You love what you want to do with her. 
But it's not necessarily you love the people. In the second room. Yes. <laughs> and in the you other only room. love in the them room. in the other room. <laughs> yeah. You, you see, so, so people need to make that distinction. You can't, you can't tell me that because you are married to uh, a he, person of another ethnic group, yeah. it means it gives you a pass. It does. It, it does you yeah. have to show it. I, and Jesus I, I Christ said, so you have I to show you. proof yeah, exactly. of repentance. Exactly. You don't just say, yeah, okay. I am now. <laughs> yeah, so some of the Americans say some of my some, some of my friends are black. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Doesn't show, mean, me. <laughs> show me. Show yeah. me. Show me that that's, you are really that's true. Really that's true. Good <laughs> but it's changing. I mean, as time goes on, it's changing. Yeah, we hope so. We hope so. Yeah. We hope so. In the in the U.S., that uh, that racism still is in a very um, high climax in there as well. You, now they're beginning to understand that. Look. You can't negate some people based on their color or ethnicity and all that. When Obama was contesting for the presidency, presidency, everybody thought a black man in the, in the history of the U.S. is not going to happen. But hey, when the guy, he stood on his point, his manifestos, how to build the country, bring people together. When he won, it was unbelievable. But when, but immediately he won, there was a backlash. Like. There was, there was a racial remorse. There was, yeah. Like, mm. What have we done? Mm. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> and he had to fight it to the end. And the, the, but Congress, the second, the the second Congress, time again, he won again. The, yeah, yeah, but the Con yeah, it was a big fight. Was, and yeah. the fight was till he left. The Congress, in fact, he created Trump. You see that? Trump was a result of Obama. Yeah, yeah. And Obama was like, we cannot have this kind of thing. That's why the Congress, it was a racial remorse. And when it was there, the Congress, Decided that this man is not going to get anything done in the legislature. Mm. True. All right. The, uh, unfortunately, we don't have the time anymore, but the conversation is quite interesting in the way we're getting at it. But we thank you, Michael Adelaide, for coming. Thank you, thank you for having thank me. Thank you very much. Thank you. We, we, we hope to have more of you as we get along to discuss Absolutely. all these issues again. Just call thank me. Thank you very I'll much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you.